rituals are you gonna perform here? No ritual at all. We just need to kill some time. Eh? Wait. You didn't take all that vengeful god's curse stuff seriously, did you? <laughs> they were eradicated ages ago. You saw those two. One thinks he's been cursed, and the other one believes his friends turned into an evil spirit. It's hard to reason with them. <sighs> now you see why I believe that ordinary folks should be kept in the dark. I've seen too many people lose their senses on account of things like this. If you want to calm them down, you need to convince them with something tangible. And the best way to do that is to make a great show of destroying the boogeyman they believe in before their very eyes. Uh, sounds like that might work. If you were trying to cheer up a three-year-old. Why would you ask that? Pyron just wants to know why we can't tell everyone the truth. Because you can't guarantee that telling an ignorant person the truth will improve the situation instead of exacerbating it. What I can do is pretend to pull back anyone who believes their time is nigh. But since the curse is imaginary, our fix will also be make-believe. Makes sense. But why would anyone believe that it's a curse? Do you know the history of the Yaksha? They once fought against the ancient gods. They fought brilliantly in a battle that engulfed the whole world in darkness. Although the gods were defeated in the end, their resentment persevered. That resentment turned into a pestilence spreading amongst the ordinary folk. Hysteric people mistook it for the curse of the gods. The plague took the lives of many, which only furthered its spread, as the dead were a breeding ground for the disease. Then someone discovered how to prevent it from spreading. Purify the air and burn the bodies of the deceased. The pioneers of these practices were, you guessed it, the founders of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Paimon didn't see that coming. Really? Yes. Anyway, it took many years, but eventually the plague was completely eradicated. <sighs> We've dealt with similar phenomena multiple times throughout the ages. Each time we successfully restored the balance between life and death. To sum it up, we are gatekeepers, guarding the border for the sake of both the living and the dead. <laughs> so when I say this curse is just a figment of the imagination, I say it with more certainty than most. But I also can't really go telling people that the ancient plagues were real or it would incite panic. <sighs> anyway, let's wait a bit more and get ready for the show. This ley line monolith will make for a really great prop. Oh, you're finally here. We just finished our preparations. Now, look here. This device is used to drive away evil spirits. It'll absorb the curse inside you and cause it to take a physical form. But don't worry. The traveler here is a seasoned warrior and will assure our safety. Oh, right. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> It'll be fine. Will that really solve my problem? Trust the director. She might look like a weirdo, but she's serious about everything she does. How can you call me a weirdo? I mean, wouldn't you say it's more charmingly naive or disarmingly different? <laughs> All right, let's get down to business. My glamorous assistant, please activate the device. Is it really possible to materialize the curse?
how are you feeling? Did the curse leave your body? Uh, yes. I feel more invigorated than ever before. I'm cured. Uh, I can't express how grateful I am for your and the Traveler's help. If it hadn't been for you, the curse would have taken my life. Ah, uh, great. In which case, I guess now I can tell you. Da, 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 da. You've been pranked. Uh, what? This exorcism device? People like you wouldn't recognize it, but it's just an old ley line monolith deceptively effective at attracting monsters. And those were real monsters, not a manifestation of your curse. So riddle me this. If I didn't do anything to lift the curse, then what's the cause of your sudden recovery? The curse wasn't real? Then why was I sick? Well, you caught a cold, ate something bad, or just scared yourself sick. It's anyone's guess, but I'm leaning towards the last option. Wouldn't be the first time in my career. How unexpected. I also didn't expect that, but uh, still, I'd like to thank you. Uh, don't mention it. I found a way to deal with your fears this time, but I can't do it over and over again. So I'd appreciate it if you try not to give in to superstitions in the future. Human life is short. Enjoy it while it lasts. Wow. I... Uh, what a weird thing to say. Uh, I... I shall head back. I'm sorry for troubling you. I feel relieved to see that it wasn't Big G's doing. However, unless he crosses the border, there will be no end to his antics. Since we are done with the matter at hand, can we resume our search for Big G? I believe that won't be needed. He found us first. Big G? Uh, um, I didn't mean to bother you. Any of you. This is Big G? He's just a child? Oh, well, he is a spirit. It's quite normal that he looks just like he did when he left this world. What Paimon imagined when Paimon first heard the name Big G. Well, let's bring him back to Wang Sheng's funeral parlor. We have much to do. After all this happened, Paimon's not even sure what's going on anymore. Actually, I'm not surprised in the slightest. Remember what I said? There's only so many evil spirits in this world. It was a twist of fate that made him leave Wuwang Hill in the first place. Now, for some reason, he can't go back. This explanation sounds a bit far-fetched to Paimon. Actually, she pretty much summed it up. Huh? <laughs> Don't ever question my professional instincts. I just wanted to check up on my friends. That's why I came to Liyue Harbor. I promise I wasn't up to any mischief. I never wanted to scare anyone. A few days ago, some people came to Wuwang Hill on a dare. I heard them saying they'd come from Liyue Harbor, so I followed one of them back and ended up here. Ah, oh, it must have been poor Lo Chung that you followed. Maybe he didn't notice you, but he could still feel your presence. Now we know what caused his nightmares. Uh, I was discovered? Well, I assume so, otherwise he wouldn't have been scared half to death. Yeah. Hotel and Mung were searching for you all over the place. Oh, that's because I couldn't find them. It's my first time in Liyue Harbor, and I got lost in the city. Now that you mention it, Big G always had a poor sense of direction. When we were kids, he'd never go down the hill by himself. We always had to lead him. 
So, all of this was just because you got lost? Why didn't you just fly? Like any other gooster spirit. Don't you think it's much easier to find your way from up above? I... can't. It's too high for me. I get scared. That's right, yes. He used to be so afraid of heights that he wouldn't even so much as look down the hill. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. I knew I wasn't supposed to show myself to the living, and with so many people walking around Liyue Harbor, my only choice was to hide. I wouldn't have found you if it weren't for the Leyline Monolith's call. I'm so relieved that you haven't become an evil spirit. Like I said, don't ever doubt my professional instincts. <laughs> now, all we have to do is escort this lost child back to Wuong Hill, and we should be done and dust to dusted. But he just said he wanted to visit his friends. Apart from me, there's also little Wu, Mu Mu, and Songze. Well, if that's the case, we can't let him down. We'll ask them all to help us prepare a farewell ceremony for Big G. Mung and I will escort Big G back to Wulong Hill. You meet with those three and ask them for keepsakes to symbolize each one of them during the ritual, then come and find us. They're all friends. Can't we just go there all together? Or maybe we can take Big G to them. Um, that's not a good idea. I don't want to scare them. Hmm, I wouldn't want ordinary folks to become superstitious. The less they know, the better. So be careful what you say when you collect the keepsakes. Are we really going with Hu Tao's plan? At least by keeping things low key, we won't be giving anyone nightmares. What are you staring at? Uh, hi! <laughs> Do you remember us? Oh, you. Sorry, I won't be needing the funeral parlor's services anytime soon. <sighs> yes, we grew up together. We still keep in touch even now. I don't know why he started working for Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. To be honest, I find their director to be quite peculiar. But he must have had his reasons. He's on his own now, after all. And he still can't get over what happened to Big G. Did he tell you about it? Yeah, he did. Um, if you could pick one thing to give to Big G as a keepsake, what would you choose? Just, you know, theoretically speaking. We're just being hypothetical here. <laughs> Definitely not gonna actually go commemorate him or anything. <laughs> I... I'd cook something for him. Oh, he could eat spicy food like no other. His favorite meal was extra spicy Jue Yun chili chicken. I can make it for you if you bring me some Jue Yun chilies. I'm sure he'd appreciate the flavor of his childhood years. I still use that old recipe. Deal! Just give us a minute. Julian chilies are a common sight in Liu. I can rustle that dish up in no time if you help me find some. Great, this should be enough. I'll get started on the Julian chili chicken. I guess you've got other folks to track down? When everyone's ready, I'll get the dish over to you.
Not you again. I told you, I'm not interested in the inner workings of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Mun told us about you. You're good friends, right? Uh, that's true, yes. Come to think of it, I remember he did join Wangsheng Funeral Parlor recently. It didn't take long for his good friends to figure out why. <sighs> the Big G incident. But I know there's nothing we can say to help him get over it. Letting go of the past is a painful process. I would know. So, is Big G the reason you're here to see me? How did you know? We didn't even say anything! <laughs> Don't worry, I'm a businessman. I won't go spilling your secrets. Everyone hears the name Moo Moo and thinks I must be dim-witted. I never heard the end of it when I set up shop. But, I'd say I proved a few people wrong. Here, take this. It's a top-of-the-line toy box we all dreamed of owning as kids. Back then, none of us could afford it. We were penniless. Today, business is booming. I ended up buying loads of these. It was a dream come true. Wow, you must be, like, super rich. <laughs> uh, for me, it's a memento of a childhood long gone. Without it, we wouldn't be where we are today. So, having found me, I guess you'll be looking for Little Wu and Songza next. Mm-hmm. We already found Little Wu. Now we gotta find Songza. I see. If it's Songza you're after, let's meet at the overpass at Feiyun Slope. It's just above the staircase leading down to the dock. I've got an errand to run. I'll come find you as soon as I'm done. Reminiscing about old times, thinking back to past events. We've been at it for years. Our hometown was completely destroyed in a disaster, so we've got nowhere to go back to. Now, home is wherever friends are. They've just been telling me you're looking for keepsakes? I make artisan sow lanterns down by Liyue Harbor. I guess they represent me better than anything. A few days ago, I bought some quality plostrite shards, they're currently all in the warehouse at the dock. I've already spoken to the manager. Could I ask you to retrieve them for me? Seems like you already know what's going on. Be back in a jiffy. We're here to pick up the plostrate shards for Sansa. Uh, I think he mentioned it. Uh, yes, here you are in the register, no problem. The plostrite shards are over in that crate there. Please, help yourselves. Doesn't seem like they're here. Let's look someplace else. Like what Sungzu was talking about? Let's head back. On the sea. Crows welled up in fire.
that. Wow. My thanks to both of you. This looks like great stuff. Please, wait a moment. This is the final step. Okay, there we go. I wrote all five of our names inside the lantern. You know, during the annual lantern rite, we all release a lantern like this. No matter what the days may bring, whichever roads we choose to take, while this rite remains observed, each of us remains the same. As for the matter of Big G, the three of us have discussed amongst ourselves and agreed we won't press you on it. But if you get the chance, please let them know we're doing well and that the things we once spoke of, they've all come to pass. Thank you. We'll pass it on. Big G is lucky to have friends like you. We got everything we need. Let's go to Wulong Hill and find Hu Tao and the others. You're back already? Sooner than I expected. You didn't go spilling the beans, did you, Paimon? Does Paimon look that unreliable to you? <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, looks like they were willing to hand over some keepsakes. So I guess they knew the deal. Nevertheless, when it comes to things like ghosts and ghouls, spirits and souls, the one thing everyone knows is you never know what to expect. Which explains why they were reluctant to pry and find out the full story. Which is just as well. Because if they had attempted to, it would have been too much for me to deal with. Guard the border between life and death. This is Wangsheng Funeral Parlor's most important responsibility. And I'm stricter than most. So what about us? Does it matter if we cross the border? Of course not. After all, you were caught up in all this already, just like Meng. It's not the end of the world if you catch a glimpse behind the curtain. And where we're going, don't be surprised at what you may see or what may occur. All of it exists within the border between the living and the dead. An ordinary place, really. The only special thing about it is that nobody really knows about it. Whatever you do, don't get all worked up over nothing, okay? Or else by the time we're out, I'll have to erase your memories. <laughs> So listen to everything I say. Let's go. Paimon's scared. But like Hu Tao says, we're already caught up in this. We better see it through to the end. <laughs> <laughs> 